What's up everyone, it's April, which as many of you know is Oral Cancer Awareness Month. Historically, the death rate associated with oral cancer is high, not because it's hard to diagnose, but because it's routinely discovered really late in the actual progression of the disease. So the best chance you have at beating oral cancer is early detection, which is why we at the Tooth Bank want to give you a quick refresher on how to do a proper head and neck exam and oral cancer screening. The first thing you're going to want to do is palpate around the border of the mandible. You're feeling for any mobile lymph nodes or palpable masses, anything that is causing a little bit of pain when you touch it. Then you're going to go ahead and move your fingers right in front of the ear on what would be the TMJ. Have them open and close and move into excursive motions. Feel for any clicking, any tenderness in the muscles. After this, you're going to want to take a moment to move in front of the patient and just look generally for any asymmetries, border irregularities, anything with a weird color change or a diameter over six millimeters. And you're going to want to know any changes to previous lesions or evolution as time passes. Intraorally, you want to go ahead and start by palpating around the border of the lips. You also want to take a look at those frenums and palpate the lips for any hard immobile lesions or masses. Feel around that gingiva and then go ahead and grab the tongue. Pay attention to the dorsal, lateral, and ventral surfaces of the tongue for irregularities. You're looking for the three C's, which are changes in color, contour, and consistency. Make sure to go ahead and palpate the hard and soft palate as well as the floor of the mouth and check out the tonsils. Generally, any lesions you see will be innocuous and will just require some follow-up with the patient so you can pay attention to its progression over time. But if you do see a suspicious looking lesion, be sure to refer the patient out to your pathologist because they may want to biopsy the lesion and study it a little bit further. 